Good evening, everybody. I'll bring this uh, special meeting uh, to order for February the 9th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the February 9th, 2023 special meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. call this uh, special hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear any potential taxpayer who wishes to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection to the local improvement plan for the Centennial Arena re retrofit as local improvement. I request that any person making representation, asking questions, or registering an objection to local improvement plan state his or her name and civic address. Your Worship, we have a resolution to open the Oh, I'm sorry. I'll back that up. Uh, resolved that the op uh, council open the public hearing for local improvement plan 1, 2023 for the uh, Swan River Centennial Arena retrofit. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobick. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Going back to the uh, points, um, just some rules. Uh, we do uh, allow for a 10 minute presentation. Uh, I will uh, allow longer if needed, but please stay, uh, stick to uh, the point. Um, I will also um, uh, note that um, this hearing does not mean that the project that we're in question is this is not approving the project. This is only starting um, the process of the borrowing. Again, there are some items inside, if you look uh, at the, the plan, that if, if it fails in any way, then this bylaw cannot continue as well. Tonight we do have on video uh, Mr. David Gray, our Director of Recreation, and also CFO Gnita. So with that, I will begin to hear anyone that wants to make representation. Again, uh, when you come forward, I would like you to name, uh, your, uh, state your name and your civic address, which will be recorded. We shall begin. Am I the only one there? You're uh, no, you uh, th uh, thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's. Uh, we do have a, a, good, a good group in the room here tonight. But uh, if you want to begin, you can uh, proceed. Uh, Your Worship, thank you. Uh, I'll go whenever you deem it appropriate, Your Worship. Uh, it's your meeting, and, and you're entitled to do that. Okay. But I, I, if you want me to go now, though, I can. Yes, I'll let you begin. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, councillors, Mr. Cool, other members of the administration, and of course those citizens present. I want to start by thanking you for allowing me to attend virtually. I appreciate the indulgence and apologize for the fact that I couldn't be there in person. I uh, do note that I sent an objection. I trust Mr. Poole it's been received and that it's accepted. It has. And if I accept it, I don't mean that you agree with it. Obviously, I mean that it's just filed. Correct. Um, I, I start by saying I have great respect and awe, in fact, for the personal sacrifices that you as councillors uh, and you, Mr. Mayor, make with respect to the time you put into governance of the town of Swan River, uh, the consideration of issues and the difficulties with that with which that um, poses. I uh, do not take uh, the filing of the objection nor my presentation lightly. I have stayed clear as you know of public debate for um, since I left council, uh, expressed because I didn't think it was helpful. In this case, I felt compelled to come forward. I believe the action being proposed is um, perhaps ill-considered and, and not fully considered and certainly premature. Of course, we can disagree uh, on that without being disagreeable. And I, I initially had thought I would ask a series of questions, um, but I think that would not help the discourse at all. It would only muddy the waters and make it more 
problematic, and I've decided uh, against that. I assume, Mr. Mayor, that's acceptable. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, as I said, I, I wouldn't feel right because I feel fairly strongly about this issue, and some of you will remember that I feel strongly that there are processes that we should be going through, and I want to review some of the history of that particular arena. There have been two prior retrofits. The last one in, I think, 2001, uh, when a considerable amount of money was spent, um, and, and as we are sometimes wont to do, we, they did it um, cheaply, and, and the consequence was that we have a long-term problem. And I suspect, and George Santayana is quoted, is, is often quoted as saying, those who learn, don't, do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And it seems to me that that's part of what we're doing here. I, I, I don't have a suggestion for you. I do think that there needs to be greater thought given to what should be done. I have a couple of ideas that, of things that might be done depending on certain research, and I don't think that the research you've done is in any way adequate or sufficient to make such a, 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 a decision. I, I'm going to jump around a little bit from my planned notes. I will say I've read the material that Mr. Poole sent me this afternoon as much as I could. I, I was in meetings till 5.30, so um, you'll apologize, I apologize that I'm perhaps less prepared and, and certainly I'm, I've never been particularly eloquent, so um, you may find my presentation disjuncted. But I read Mr. Poole's memorandum of July 5th Council. One of the things that jumps out at that is the variety of numbers that are being used in in all of the various representations. So in that presentation, the retrofit cost was $5,000 and the arena cost was $20 million. I'm not sure where those numbers come from, but they're different than, for instance, the number in, numbers in the survey, which followed very shortly. And now the proposed plan exceeds $8 million, and I suspect that that number is conservative. We have a 50-year-old building, more than 50 years old actually, and um, it, it appears, uh, if you'll think about the Saddle Dome, which was built in 1980, they're already talking about tearing it down and rebuilding in Calgary because things expire. And I don't know that we have, and Mr. Paul you the one exception to my questions, uh, it may be that we've done an, an, um, a detailed analysis of the structural components, and particularly the foundation below. I, I, I don't see that in the materials. I, I don't know that it was done. I know it wasn't previously done. I know that the horizontal drilling and thawing uh, has not been done. That was something that was our part of our original plan. Those are major concerns in my view um, that cannot be done, that cannot allow a project to proceed until they're done. Moreover, we have an existing capital plan passed by, by uh, Council, I think it was in 2012, um, for development of an area out by the school. That plan, to my knowledge, has never been revoked or repealed. It remains in force. And one of the challenges for this council and for council previously is that it, it, if you want to change a plan, there's nothing wrong with changing plans. That's, that's and nobody but a fool would continue on a course of conduct knowing that it's now not the best course of conduct. But the process for council should be to revoke <coughs> decisions and start over. I also, in terms of, of Appendix D, and I, I assume you've all got the letter that Mr. Poole sent to me and the appendixes that were attached. If not, Mr. Poole, you might want to provide it to them. Appendix D, which was Mr. Poole, which included Mr. Poole's memoranda, um, talked about the fact that this would fit the, um, and again, I, I found eventually your strategy plan, as it was called, it's, it's um, I don't want to comment on it, I, uh, that can be helpful, but I will say that if you read the caption at four, which is the caption which in the memoranda says that, that this project is necessary to fulfill that, none of that, of, cap, of caption four, contains anything that would justify this particular activity. Having said that, the reality is that that probably is a deficiency in the strategy plan as opposed to a deficiency in this analysis. 
But there are alternatives that haven't been considered, not the least of which is that we have a community effectively in three municipalities of 8,000 people. We will now have three, if we, we have now three, and we will continue to have three active arenas. How that can be justified as a viable and reasonable alternative it escapes me. And more importantly, the reason for constructing it in Swan River would appear to be the same problem that we often complain about from Swan River as to Dauphin, Brandon, or Winnipeg, which is a centralization of items. That doesn't mean that we should explore or or, or um, eliminate an arena. It means that that option hasn't even, to my knowledge, been considered. And lastly, nothing in the material suggests that there is any meaningful plan to deal with budgetary problems, cost overruns, uh, and I read with care your comments on how that would be handled, Mr. Gould, or a cost-benefit analysis. I have, however, read the utilization rates, and in 2022, there were, I think it's 107 people in, uh, that were the active rates. I can find it if you need it, uh, Your Worship, just one moment. Which, which one of us? Here it is. I, I apologize, I lied. I said 107. It was 105 in minor hockey, 47 in figure skating, and total use um, for that year of 178. It seems to me evident that that is an extraordinary, uh, that spending $8 million for 178 users is an extraordinary expenditure. And, and it seems to me evident as well that there are other agencies in Swan River. There's a gymnastics club, there's the Friendship Center, there are other agencies that provide, and, and I'll use the Friendship Center particularly because I know it particularly well, that provide far greater numbers of uh, benefits and far greater participation rates, and yet the town of Swan River has never, to my knowledge, and continues not to provide any significant financial support for that in utility. I, I mystify why we then think that it's appropriate to spend $8 million on what would benefit a relatively few people. And given the cost of hockey, those people who are best able to afford it on their own. We also didn't contribute, to my knowledge, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, um, to the ski hill, or nothing substantial in any event. And yet, um, that facility is certainly going to have at least the same or greater utilization rates. So, in the end, my view is that this, your action is premature, that your plan needs to have, amongst other things, participation by the other municipalities. That barring that, moving ahead has, runs the same risk of the same problems that develop with the pool, which are legion. And not only the construction difficulties and the resulting um, lawsuit, which is now mired, or still mired, I guess, is a better way of putting it. Um, and and I, uh, you know, I, I have no no comment on that. I, I think it's just the way that civil litigation in Manitoba appears to go. Um, it is not particularly helpful. But I fear greatly that once we go down this path, we will end up in a situation where we will find ourselves following exactly the same path. And as I said, I'm not, you know, we all know I'm not particularly smart, so I, I don't really you know, understand some of the issues perhaps, but you know, when Einstein said that the significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that created them, I think one of the things that he was trying to communicate was that when we are confronted with a problem which has a definitive challenge, which which makes it difficult, and I, and I particularly remind myself often of Councilor Mor uh, um, Councilor Morio's comments of wants and needs. I'm sure that all of you already heard that a number of times. He's want to say it often, but whether we need an arena or a new arena or a retrofitted arena. Um, is something that's debatable. We, we certainly want it, and nobody would suggest otherwise. And in fact, if you read my material, um, I have acknowledged that that's clearly something we need to do something with the arena, whether it's 
mothball it or whatever, and we certainly have a want. But whether we can afford that, whether we should afford that, whether there are other alternatives, and certainly in your strategic plan, other things seem to be much higher in the priority list. Now, I might have chosen different priorities, but you should not simply adopt a plan because you think that's what should be popular or need a word wanted but because it fits into an overall strategy and a thoughtful process for deciding the future of the town and i suspect or fear that you have failed to do that i, I think i'm close to my time so I, I won't go on too much more other than to say that my objection is not to your making a decision nor to any particular decision it is that at this time you appear not to have done the necessary work to make an informed decision and the consequence of that will be borne by all of us for at least 20 years and i wish or hope or entreat that you will give yourself more time think through the project contain better research and consider other alternatives. Your Worship, subject to any questions, that is my presentation. Um, I'm perfectly willing to answer questions from the audience, if there are some, or from any of the council. <clears throat> Does any member, oh, uh, sorry, thank you, Mr. Gray. Can I just get your uh, civic address, please? I, I thought I said it, and I certainly did in the objection. I didn't write it down. So just, uh, it's, it's fine, it's 20 Parkway Drive, Swan River, Manitoba. Thank you. Um, does any member of council have any questions? Mr. Gray. Go ahead. I'm just wondering, were you not on council when the decision was made? No. You weren't on council in 2018, 2019? No. When were you on council? I would, when the decision was made to do what? I, I apologize, councillor. I, I, sh I shouldn't have been so cavalier. The dis this decision was made on this project was made in 2022. I left council in 2020? 20. 20. Something like that. 20. 2021. Oh, we put in the sand base. We put in the sand base, yes. I was in council, council for that. Okay, and it was that's what I wanted to be clear on. Yeah. yeah. No, I was I was on that. And, and I can speak to that. We, we chose that for a variety of reasons, most particularly because it's a portable process. That is, it can be redone. Um, and it could be taken out and reused, except for a few of the fixture heads at the beginning. So it was it was done thoughtfully in the idea that if we built a new arena, if we moved the facility somewhere else, if we did other things, we had options. And so it was the least expensive option, which gave us the best possible alternative. In that particular case, um, we chose a contractor who had a significant history of doing these projects across Western Canada. I think, and Mr. Poole will know these numbers far better than I will, but I think he'd done something like 120 or 130 projects. The only other bid we had was a person who'd never done a project, but thought they could, and came in with a bid that was lower, but didn't contain most of the extras that we were that were obvious. And so that was how that was chosen. But it was chosen expressly because it gave us alternatives to uh, make better choices. I hope that helps, Councillor. Yeah, I actually contacted that uh, construction that did that. And um, I guess at that time, there were some other things we might have been able to do too, but I mean, that's in the past. And we're dealing with those decisions from the past, right now, in the future. And these are the cards we're dealt with and we're trying to do it as responsibly as we can. Um, I don't know, have you been at the arena any time lately? I have been at the arena, not recently, but yeah. I have been at the arena. Yeah, if you're there, you'll, you'll see quite a large crack in the ice that's happening, which is obviously a safety concern. So we don't really have the time that you're speaking of, I don't think. Well, it's Okay, I, I, with the greatest respect, I think there are alternatives, which include Minotonis. But anyway, that's um, There is alternatives for Minotonis for our minor hockey program, definitely. But Minotonis is not suitable for the Junior A program that we house. So, albeit we have three arenas in our community, they are not, you're not comparing apples to apples, unfortunately. There's 
not artificial. There's artificial ice at some, there's not artificial ice at some. There's other issues, I believe. I'm not speaking to which one, but I know there could be mold issues at one, maybe even two. Maybe even three. I don't think that's been a tonus, but my understanding is it's a perfectly acceptable facility, except that the MGHL has asked that it not be done. But uh, candidly, the choice of whether or not to keep, retain a minor hockey team or a, minor, uh, a junior hockey team, I, I'm not sure how you justify an $8 million expenditure for that. But that's, that's a choice for you. Okay. I think it's an ill considered uh, choice. Any further questions? Councillor Bollard. Uh, just to make a statement that I, I do believe that the, the town of Swanderer did put funding into Thunder Hill in the first expansion. Mm -hmm. It was G7 that actually put 0 0.3 of a mill in for three years. I believe our contribution would be around $60,000 for the first right. part of Thunder Hill. And I just want to make okay. sure that we keep on, on this topic here. Yeah, but sorry, you, you are right, but let's keep on to this topic here. So, anything further? Okay, thank you, Mr. Gray, and your uh, your objection has been received as well. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll take my leave, Your Worship. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Go ahead, if you like. I'm wondering if I can go next because I might not last through the whole thing okay. with my head. Of course. That's all yes. right. I'll maybe stand here so that... You can sit here if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, of course. Before I start, I want people to know I'm very pro <coughs> hockey. I slept with hockey pucks when my grandson was little, and he played hockey. And his almost his three quarters of his brain is hockey. He now yeah. refs as an adult. So, if you can state your name, Maggie. I will, Margaret Romack, thirteen sixteen First Street North. So just so that uh, I remember from teaching days that we tend to remember very little of what we hear. So I've brought you a coffee for later you can keep. Thank you for the work you've done so far. I'm glad to see that you're consulting the public for our opinions. What is the best thing for the whole Swan River Valley? There are three categories of so-called stakeholders as I see it. Number one is taxpayers, number two is all four municipalities, and number three is sports teams and individuals who use the facility. And I believe that's the correct order to look at the three stakeholder groups. The decision should not be based on what is best for the Stampeders, other teams, or for any individuals. It must be based on what's best for all four municipalities and indeed it should be based on what's best for the taxpayers most especially. There needs to be input from the other municipalities and I would suggest not just the four chairs or, or reeves but the municipality councils. Because I think it's well past time that we got over the idea that we are four municipalities. We're one. I don't care how it's divided up or how it's labeled. We are one and we have to look at it that way. So I'm, I'm very not knowledgeable about the things that you've written, but I've, I've got some questions here. Should Swan River be making a decision in isolation from the other municipalities? We are told Minnetonas Arena needs renos. What are the costs of those renos? Can Swan River and Minnetonas share data about each of their renovations and come up with a solution that is best for all? Can a staggered renovation take place with both communities planning out the details together? Can some of the Swan River renos be deferred, done over a few years, or some dropped altogether? Why are we just hearing about this one choice when we had three presented to us before? It is 17 kilometers or 13 minutes between the two facilities in Minnetonas and Swan River. You have a duty to be cooperating with other municipalities to make the most responsible decision possible. The taxpayers cannot bear the weight of a decision that is not frugal and well thought out. And if you have questions, I would take them. Okay. 
I'll just uh, start firstly by you're asking us if we had any uh, discussion with the other four or the other three municipalities. We always have ongoing discussions with our municipal neighbors and, and invite them for any time, uh, as you may have heard in the past, with uh, shared services yes. uh, and so forth. And that's always on a continual basis. Uh, as but a, specifically about the arenas? And, uh, we have uh, we've sat with them and, and we will present to them uh, our findings once tenders come in and, uh, and give them the option. That's already when you've got plans for standalone your own. See, I believe there's enough between you and Manitobas that some, some uh, planning together would go a long way. We, we are trying to do that, trust me. This I council so. has been trying to do that for several years now. Um, we, uh, does the town of Swan River have any decision or any input into other arenas? Right now, no. Um, using the municip separate municipalities yeah, are uh, in control of theirs, and, and it would be a great thing if, if we could. There's always, there was often one talk about a rec uh, district, and, and we would put recreation under one umbrella, but that has still not uh, come to fruition. Um, uh, can we drop items off on the rental? As this process will continue on, um, that may have to be the case where we'll look at the, what the tender documents look like and what the prices will be. And if, if this is <coughs> the price of the reno or council chooses that they don't want to proceed with this, then that will be the decision at the time. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Nobody else? I'd like to speak, but I'm not quite ready to make a note. Okay, so Mr. McKay will go after the next person who chooses to speak. I guess you're ready, Mr. McKay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Hart. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to make my representation. I, um, my first thought was that I wouldn't get involved, because I have been involved in this for 30 years. Well, uh, oh. well so maybe you can sit here. And, and speak up a little bit more because there are some people in the back that cannot hear you. I have a hard time hearing you, but no. Sorry, I'll try to speak louder. Tell me if, if you can't hear me. No, we can't Sorry. Hear you but you know what? There is chairs in the front no, here, too. Louder. <laughs> 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 and we have Lawrence Hart, uh, 442 Lab or Andre Bay. Um, I swore I would never get involved with this again because I uh, was involved for 30 years, 10 years, the last 10 years in Swan River. I made a presentation in 14, I believe it was, with the Wellness Center, is that when it was? And I felt that the advice that I had given council was good advice, that it was going to be uh, very costly to operate a pool that had very few people going to it. Uh, we're not in a location where there is no water, there's water all the way around us. So the advice that I gave was not received well. Council went ahead. A number of things that, that, that this brings to the forefront again is, and I read from the paper, because I think I hadn't thought of it, I wasn't planning on coming, and I said that this afternoon. Uh, the anticipated cost is $7.5 million, which is fine. I don't know where you come up with that, and I don't never researched it, and I'm not going to question that. But what I'm going to question is the revenues that uh, you're proposing to receive. What happens if those revenues don't come in? For example, the uh, Arts and Council. 3.75 million. If you don't get that money, what happens? Do we proceed? Your, your tender document for the pool is similar going to be with this facility, 7.5, when it comes in at 10 or 12 million, similar to what the wellness center did. It was way over budget. There was addendums and addendums and it came in at what it is. My concern is that, yes, the rink is nice. I agree with the comments that were made by Mr. Ring and this lady. 
we should work together. I know that's very difficult because I tried that for 10 years with the municipalities and didn't get too far. But I think this council has to realize that, as Mr. Morio has said at one meeting that I, I listened to, wants and needs, and it was brought up plenty of times during the day. You're looking at a fire, a fire truck, or have been looking at, I still don't know if that's the case, but that's about a million dollars. You have a landfill site that at some point in time is going to have to be relocated. You have a sewage lagoon that is at capacity, over capacity, it's going to cost you a fortune. At least it was looking like a fortune when I researched all that back in 2007 or 8, whatever it was. So you've got many, many needs coming in front of you. Not wants, needs. And I think council has to look at this and determine what is a need and what is a want. And if it is a want, how best can we be able to afford that without putting undue financial stress on the community? Our community isn't growing, people. <clears throat> when you look at it, I don't think our, our population hasn't grown in 15 years, really. I think council has to look at this and, and choose a route that is going to work. I also think this uh, community fundraising campaign, I'm not sure what that is, if that's asking the community to fundraise again. There's a group that is fundraising. Yes. Pardon me? There is a group that has been organized to uh, fundraise. I hope it's in a better organization that does a little more than the last group for the Wellness Center, as you're well aware, that they did not raise anywhere near a million dollars. I also think that the Stampeders need to put more of an effort into helping fund this. I know they have difficult times, and I'm looking at you guys. Don't beat me up, please, because most of you guys here. But the reason for this problem in our arena stems right back to the Stampeders from putting the ice in too early and leaving it in for eight months of the year. That, that, that problem may not have arisen in the future if we had not started developing, putting ice in August 1, basically when the date starts. So they, share, they should share some of the responsibility. I know they have a lot of fundraising to operate their own uh, team, which is getting harder and harder, I suspect, every year. But there has to be a joint effort with everybody. If you're gonna build this, let's get everybody involved. Let's just, because if you don't get the fundraising done, um, it'll be no different than the Wellness Center. Once council decides the dotted line that we're gonna build it, your fundraising ceases, basically. So with all that, uh, I'm not opposed to this, don't get me wrong, uh, but I think this council needs to put a lot of thought into this and get a lot more involvement to be able to afford this. Uh, our, um, our costs, as I'm not gonna go into what our costs are today as compared to what they were a couple of years ago with inflation and all that. But that's not to say that inflation could be here for a long time and that is a lot of people out there that are hurting. And I, I know there are some that are having a difficult time now surviving. You keep tacking on two or three hundred dollars, and that's just for recreation, plus your other expenses that are going to in increase. Everything increases, your fuel and everything else. And then you don't know what the school division is going to do yet, if they're going to do any reason. So you guys have to take all this into consideration. Your five-year capital plan, and I know I could never get council to think seriously on a five-year capital plan. And I question them on a ten-year capital plan. There was just no involvement, and I think that is totally wrong. I think that as electoral officials, you have to look at what you want this community to be in the future, and that means a lot of different things, and a lot of it is financial for it. Please take note, and if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Any member of council have any questions? I didn't want to follow David. <laughs> He did a good yeah. job. He did a good job, too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McKay, are we ready? Andy? Uh, could I just ask a question of Lawrence Hart, please? Sorry? Can I ask a question of Lawrence Hart before, before he leaves here tonight? I think I can allow that. Okay. Uh, Lawrence, I, I didn't disagree with anything that you had to say there. They were all very good points. But I would like to correct on one thing for the original Rec and Wellness project that we had, and that was that it was fully funded. We had seven, uh, from now this is old, a long time ago, but we had 7.2 million uh, uh, commitment from the, the federal government and the provincial government and the uh, uh, town of Swan River 
There was an annual check who was Minister of Finance at the time, got us another million, so that makes 8.2 um, <coughs> to, uh, um, if we got the other two municipalities in, because she was already aware this has to be a valid project. So that would have made 8.2 million for a 9.4 project. Plus we had corporate donations, including about a third of a million from uh, Richardson's, from Hartford Richardson, 100,000 from the credit union, and so on. Plus we had that 2740 club, which we never really got going on, we got it started, because we were so busy fighting real world actions. Um, but we would have potentially had a 10% uh, over one in, in reserve. So I would say that the original Rec and Wellness project in its entirety with the field house with the walking track on that over seven acre site um, was uh, financially very viable for, for capital costs. Okay, thank you and, and, and thank you, but we do want to uh, continue on with this theme here tonight. Uh, Mr. McKay. <coughs> do, do you want me to go up there? Or Please. Here? No, we if you can come hear, up here. We couldn't hear Lawrence hardly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So yeah. Chat your voice will carry better. Yeah. 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 I can. It will take me a couple minutes. Okay. We'll take a recess and then uh, we'll shut that fan off. <laughs> you guys don't have a mic system? No, we don't. Because I was here at a meeting before COVID and it was the same thing. The audience couldn't hear consider that. We will. Thank you. Lawrence, just a comment. I, I was actually going to say it and I completely forgot, but when you asked about the revenues in, in, the, uh, in the document that you had read, that if we didn't receive any of those funds you know, that are listed in there, if any of those fail, then the borrowing cannot proceed. Okay, you have the floor, Mr. McKay. <clears throat> Did you want me to come up here or stand on the back? Wherever you're comfortable. Okay, I'll stand right here. <clears throat> Good evening, I'm Darren McKay. I'll give you an address, 1500 Third Street North, Swan River. The present arena was constructed approximately 55 years ago and has served the Swan River and the Swan Valley well. Um, the Swan River and the Swan Valley, um, sorry, I made no choice in sitting there, but it, in my opinion, it's basically a big shop. And similar to the Swan Valley Co-op with their food store, prior to building their present location, they added on and renovated that building many times, and before you know it, it was structurally unsafe and needed replaced. I have completed and been involved in quite a number of construction projects and developments, and I have found in many cases they run considerably over budget, and it would be a shame to proceed with a proposed seven million or so project and it turns into a $10 million project. Possibly the cost of a brand new arena, similar to the, what we have. In my opinion, we don't need an MTS center in Winnipeg, we don't need a Portage or a Dauphin arena, but when the time is right, the Swan Valley or Swan River should build an arena similar to what we have. You know, the, the Swan Valley, um, the Swan Valley should build it together and use it forever. So um, 
I am opposed to the Boren bylaw and I object to the town of Swan River proceeding with this rental project. And I think you should reconsider and possibly do some very minimal repairs to it and when time's right, build a new one. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any uh, member of council want to comment or ask a question? Okay, being none. Anyone further? I just, I just have to add to this. Have you, have you actually, um, oh, sorry, call it Walnut, uh, uh, like a I was just wondering, have you actually um, looked into the cost of a new arena? You mean like as far as? Uh, as building a new one instead of renovating the old one? We have, we've had, uh, I guess, how would you say, uh, Derek, the... Um, like very preliminary estimates done in uh, spring of 2022. So yes, and we've, we've, we've contacted multiple other municipalities who have recently uh, built arenas, not private, public arenas. So do you have a number that you can give out? Or? Uh, just quickly here. Give me a minute. <clears throat> uh, so very recently, Cote First Nation, $15 million. Uh, Verdon, $18 million, which wasn't just an arena. Mendoza, $7.2 million. Rivers, $6.5 million. Isinaboya, $18 million. Uh, there's one, a brand new one in PEI, $10 million. Winyard, $12 million. Lorette Taché, $18 million. So are those numbers that you looked up, which one of those numbers would be a comparable building to the one that's in the From what we see, the 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 six and the seven are are not. They they don't give us what we have between the twelve and the eighteen. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gray. Just a question. Uh, I just have uh, Mr. Gray was on first, so I'll let him go. Uh, I, I confer, but thank you, Your Worship. I apologize for interrupting and for coming back uh, like a bad dream or something. But one of the things in a question, answer to a question, you said that if any of the monies that weren't received, and I actually, I think there was reference to that in one of Mr. Poole's materials when I'd forgotten it until you mentioned it. If any of the monies that are being proposed aren't granted, then the project wouldn't proceed. Did I understand that correctly? Well, I guess I should say that the borrowing will not proceed. That's correct. But we need the borrowing to proceed in order to even for the project to receive, uh, proceed. Right, right. So, so if the project isn't going to proceed, if any of those several grant applications don't come in, or we don't raise enough private money or fundraising money, what's the plan then? And how is it different than than the suggestion that we take our time and do it right. That uh, I guess what council is dealing with right now is is the risk of uh, perhaps not having a um, uh, surface to play on, and that's the where we are right, right now. What it, it, I, I, it's my fault. I, I apologize. I didn't ask the question clearly, and I um, it, it, if we're not going to proceed with the project if one of those don't go through. Surely you have a contingency plan, or is a contingency plan then just polar breath and hope? No. Um, if 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 the project is far too much more money or, or any of those things, we're going to have to review it, and we may have to downsize what the, what the scope of the project might be. Maybe it's just okay. the floor, because that's the key issue right now, is the floor. So we may have to downsize the project to just simply just the floor. Okay. Okay, that's uh, that's an answer. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. Mr. Hart. Sorry, Your Worship, I, I had a question. I didn't write it down. I don't know how much of this group sitting here understands municipal finances. The municipality is only allowed to borrow some of I don't know where you guys are at or how much space you have left to reach your maximum. Now that could come into play as well with this, depending on what turns out in this. Also, council has to, as I mentioned earlier, has to keep in their back of their mind other projects that are a need 
that are going to have to take place. So your borrowing limits are, are with us. And I, I remember there used to be a formula, and I can't remember the formula. I can remember it's based on a set value. So, uh, and then depending on how much right now that the town is in hot for. So there is not too many options when it comes to huge dollar amounts. Did you want to uh, fulfill or, or talk about the well, obligations and what we can borrow? So everybody understands that building something brand new and if it's going to be like a $50 million dollar price tag, as an example, not say it would, then we don't have the borrowing capacity or would put us into a really tough situation that Mr. Hart is saying. That's correct. Municipalities can borrow up to 20% of their assessed assessment. So it's, uh, we are at, I think it's $16 million is our max that we can borrow. Right now we're sitting approximately just under nine. Go ahead. So anyway, doing a project, like, like Darren has mentioned. Um, you can you just state your name and your address? Derek Boychuk, Lavin Parkway Drive. Anyone doing a project not knowing what's under the ground, I mean, I don't think this, I don't think anyone's going to guess what's underneath there. And I think we need to make a serious effort and think that once you open that ground up, you're going to find something that you're not going to want to see. And what happens if we start digging and you've only got a cap and you run out of money? And the second question I got is... Well, let's answer maybe the first one because that is something that we're all thinking about up here too. Yeah, the, we couldn't do a geotechnical analysis on the current rink because it would involve destroying the temporary floor. <clears throat> So when the, the first day the ice comes out, we will be planning on getting, that's the first thing that needs to be done. The, it's going to tell us a lot of information. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it uh, in, the, in the springtime or at Christmas when we, when we needed it. But uh, yeah, we don't have it and it needs to be done. It is, it is the first thing to be done. Second question I got is, just recently, there's other communities that are a lot smaller than us have built some pretty beautiful facilities. And I guess the question I have is, we're a lot bigger, we're a bigger town than some of these facilities, other towns. I was the last one here that just built up, they just built up, they just opened up a... Yeah, they just, they just opened up a big, big ring. I think it cost like $18 million. Or Cinnabon? Cinnabon? So, so the question I got is like, how do you plumb into some of that money? Like, that's that. Don't tell me that's that. They never fundraised. Uh, they never fundraised that much money out there. That, I heard what I heard is that most of that money was government money. Yeah, I know. Eleven point five million from federal and provincial for that building, and they put in seven. Okay. So, so have we been in contact with them to? to, to to find out how they proceeded and got the funding, that funding. Like I hate putting old, a new money onto an old building when eventually we're 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 going to uh, we're going to regret it. <coughs> Do you have a direct question then? Well, Chris, the question is: is that Has council gone out and found and talked to these other other communities and and, and asked them how did how did they get this their funding? Some of them, I think, that might have been able to get some of that uh, old uh, grant money that uh, some of it has been frozen, right? Like, you make your worship. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we have, have reached out to other communities. Uh, how do I, the, the one that you're speaking of, like of the Nirva Bill, um, that funder that came under the, the ICIP federal grant, which has been frozen because the intake list is so long, and that they probably applied for that. I would say five plus years ago, um, and they're just getting it there. Uh, and the intake on that grant has been frozen for the last two years by the province. So we've been trying to wiggle our way into getting that, and we're in the queue, but it's it's a long process. So uh, so what we've, we've been doing is like, uh, as it states in the uh, 
advertisement there the the fifty percent the three and a half million dollar one that's a new grant that the province has that we're lobbying hard to to get at so but yeah we have reached out to other communities as to where they're getting their sourcing and a lot of it is it was coming from those like ICEP grants and stuff like that where based on your project and where it goes in the queue and how it rates and so I guess the question the question I got is so if if we announced that we are going to do a new build would that open up additional resources for funding? I mean, there's 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 two ways of thinking there. You're putting when when I'm assuming when when government's looking at putting new money into an old building, you're taking a risk. But putting building a new building, is there is there a different different criteria for for uh, uh, for funding when you're doing a new build? Yeah, with with the federal one, there is a, a bigger grant that, but uh, then again, it goes to the max of fifty percent. So if you go to, a, like I say, an $18 million, then our commitment becomes $9 million. So but, but, you're, but you're just telling me that, that you just said that, that to, re to renovate this is going to be $7 million, right? Seven plus? Mm -hmm. if, if everything goes right. If everything goes right. Yeah. yeah. So. Mr. Bordia, and then uh, I see Mr. Gray wants to speak as, again as well. Go ahead. Uh, Kelvin Bordia, 890 Ross. Yeah, I'm a big believer in uh, not throwing you know, good things after bad. I just think that an investment needs to be made, but I also do think that we need to do a little bit more research in regards to how we go about it. I do believe there is, you know, it opens up, like Mr. Boychuk said, uh, while it's opened up a little bit more when, when it's going towards something that's new as opposed to, to a patch job. And when you guys did that, Temporary ice service the last go around. What did the contractor tell you as far as the life expectancy of it? Did he did he have a timeline on? It? They, it was three to five years. As well. Yeah, they wouldn't guarantee it at all. No, but uh, they did expect it to last between three and five years. And what they, they wouldn't say give would be the first thing that time. would fail on it. There. Pardon me. What they say would be the first thing that would fail on it. They wouldn't touch that with a ten foot pole. How, how, what are we on? Where, what, what are we? Year, we're in year six or seven of that, don't we? Uh, I believe we're entering year four. Mr. Gray. Worship. Um, I, I just a point more of information. I assume council has turned their attention to the fact that after June seventh of this year, there the the provincial government won't be able to commit funds until after October the fourth. That's correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we were all we all understood that that was uh, one of the timelines. Yeah. Anything further? Mr. McKay? I would like to know, if possible, what would be the replacement cost of our exact Centennial Arena? Once again, a fairly basic building built back in 1967 with wooden bleachers, a few dressing rooms added onto the side, the waiting room added onto the side. Surely you folks got a price of a replacement of our existing one? What was it? In spring of 2022, we did go to an engineering firm and ask for, we couldn't get class D, because we didn't have the money to pay for it at the time, but we did ask them ballpark with what we have listed our services that we provide, the lobby, change rooms, we want to probably add a accessible change room, all of it. But uh, we did not state the parameters that the stands would be made of wood or anything like that. We did state new building with those amenities. Uh, of course, their, their question for the longest time was, what are you going to build? It all depends. You can fill it full of gold and it'll be worth two hundred million dollars. So he said twelve point five to eighteen million, which really meant twelve point five to two hundred million dollars. Depends what you build. Hmm. Maybe the director of the might have one of those things. Well, once again, uh, that'd be a shame to spend 
if our arena costs what we have, if it happened to cost seven or eight million dollars and we happen to run into a project and it spans 10, fixing up a 55 year old building, that would be. It's just not bad. progress. Yeah. Mr. Boychuk. Isn't there a way to, to build it in phases? Undo, right? In phases? And, and we, 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 we do the, the bare requirements? I mean, I, I, I mean, I used to tra I've traveled most with the hockey team there in the past, and you know, rinks like uh, Wavy Capitals rink. It, it's not a, it's not a fancy rink. It's nothing any, any fa fancy. I mean, I don't, like I, I said, some, some said we don't need a, we don't need a dolphin. We need a credit, we don't need a credit union center. But, but is there a possibility of looking at that and, and, and building basically starting at phases, and we, and we do phase one. I just hate the fact of, of honestly, of, of spending money, that much money, on an old building. If we want to see progress in the community, we have to go get it. All those will be considered, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Bordian. Yeah, and, and furthermore, like the fact that, you know, our numbers are low for minor hockey and our attendance is low, or if maybe so for their junior team, well, Throwing a new roof on the joint isn't going to attract any more attention to people to come into a new facility to watch a junior game or a minor hockey game and think, you know what, what a beautiful place to come, what a meeting place, and they will stay, they will come back. But our pat the patch job on the rink, it's just, it's, I think we limp it out. My opinion is we limp it out and we start opening avenues for new and we fundraise until we can do it. When you have money, you know, you, it's easier to get money. Yeah. And, and that's the path we need to go on. And if it's a crack we've got to worry about, then we got a guy out there maintaining that crack every day. Every day. Discussing stuff with, you know, phone consultants on rings and stuff like that. Maybe it's too damn cold there all the time. Maybe their ice is shrinking. You know? It's, there's, there's... I just think we need to do more research and Derek hit it right on the head as a guy who sits behind the desk and takes phone calls from contractors who want to come in and dig up the surface that we have and you can tell by the tone of their voice that they're unsure of what they're getting themselves into and when you're making recommendations and the addendums are coming out based on your recommendations then you know the research just isn't done yet and it's just kind of going to be you know, a shot in the dirt. Mr. Blakeshaw. I say we put this to sleep. We patch it as much as we can. We put a we put a we put a group together of stakeholders that have some experience. No disrespect to to everybody on this, but we have a lot of people with a lot of construction experience and project experience. And we put a, a, a team together to go out and find the best that we can with what we got to work with, and then we work as a team and then we build and we proceed. Maybe we don't build it right away. Maybe we build it five years from now. But we need to start acting now. And the fact is that we're just going to patch what we have. My understanding is is that if there was an issue with the ice surface that we have now, that there is someone that could come and complete or fix the, if there was a pipe leak or anything like that. My understanding is is that correct? Yeah. If there's if the temporary floor breaks down, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So so there is contingency if something is to happen with with what's out there right now. Well, that, that's, the, that's the system. So if the system breaks down, it can be repaired. If the ice faults due to the floor underneath moving, it just moves that system. We can't, we don't know why the floor is moving for sure. <clears throat> so that's, you know, we have been in contact with, you know, we've, we've contacted engineers and the engineering companies. We've contacted the, the contractors who build these things for the hands-on approach, and then private companies we've sat with that own 32 of these in southern Manitoba, and and they none of them will touch the light. Like they won't tell us this is your problem. Do this, and you're good for five years. They, nobody's going to do that. We don't know why that floor is moving. We do need a geotechnical analysis, really bad. The system meaning you're talking just the sand and the pipe. On top of the concrete floor. On top of the styrofoam and the concrete floor. Yeah. And then the rest we're dealing with ice, right? That's right. <coughs> Anything further? 
my last question. So I'm here formally objecting to this proceeding going. What's the next step and who? I know some other people spoke, but I'm one that definitely <coughs> I object. Does anyone else object here to you, for you guys proceeding? Do you object, Mike? Mark? Well, I think a lot more uh, homework has to go into it. So you object I to don't have the knowledge you guys do about ice and that, but I go back to saying yeah. we're a valley. Yeah. And, and really, if we're going to put up a big new rink, this should involve the other municipalities, in which case you've got a far bigger fundraising to draw on. 100%. So that's why I think they need to sit down and talk nickels and dimes with the other arenas about how much rentals they want to put into their rinks. So what's the, so 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 the next step? So the, like I said in my opening statement, um, this is to start the process of the borrowing, which again may not even happen due to any of the, the items that are inside the, the bylaw that may fail. If uh, we move forward with that, it has to go to the municipal board. Your objections will be reviewed as well. And, uh, and then they'll make the decision whether or not we can proceed to the next uh, readings. But at the same time, if the tenders that are out right now, if we receive them and they're over the price of this uh, borrowing, then we can't really proceed with it. So council will have to make decision whether or not they're going to change the scope of the project or they're going to change their minds and, and look at some other options that you have presented tonight. So this is not in any way a slam dunk as far as doing the retrofit. There's a lot of other things that have to be uh, play out and we are reviewing and, and, and listening to other uh, options. I'll be honest with you right now that I can't share with you, but there are other options that we are looking at right now as well. Go ahead. I'll go on record in objecting to the spends. Okay. So anything further? Go ahead. Uh, Danielle Gordon, 416 11th Avenue North. Um, just a question. So what is what can be done to give more time? It sounds like everybody wants more time, which I mean honestly is kind of disappointing as a community because we've known about this for five years that this was we were going to have to replace this. So it's, it's a little bit disappointing as a, a community as a whole, we're just kind of coming together on this issue. Um, but so, but that's where we are and we can't change the past. So at this point, it, what can be done? Like, it sounded like Mr. Gray was talking about the option with the floor as it is now that that decision was made because there was maybe an option to give it more life. Did I misunderstand that? Like, is there something because I understand as it is right now, we have a current issue. There's always risk by putting an ice again next year with it as it is that we will not have a full season. So is there something that can be done with the current arena to give us just a little bit more life without throwing millions of dollars into it till a decision is made? We have asked that question for <coughs> years now. <laughs> the, what we're getting with the kicker, I guess the, with the answer that ensures us use, that's key, is that it ensures us use, is, is there's this renovation. Fix your floor, it's moving, we don't know why, you've gotta fix your floor. If you don't deal with the humidity, the, uh, humidity, why fix your floor? If you're not gonna deal with your roof, why deal with the other two? It's like every renovation. We, we, we completely see, what are we gonna, what are we going to find when we pull this thing out? We, we can only fix what we can see right now. We, we, won't, we don't know what's going to fall apart in 10 years when we say this thing is going to last 15 years. But the, the, the decisions that have been made over the past two years, and I, I guess I'm, I can't speak for council, but uh, it is risk versus time. That's why we're here. And, and they are exploring options. Um, the, this, like, like, uh, Mayor Jacobson said this is just a municipal process to allow us to borrow in the case that we do this. There's, there's risks involved like with, with user groups in, in the arena that, that council, again I can't speak for them, but in the past has not been willing to be responsible for. So doing nothing was not an option. So they're going to do something. So we reviewed the new building, we looked at our financials, we gave them as much information as we could, and they 
decided that that was not the way they were going to go either. So it's going to be a retrofit. So we we started the process on what's the absolute minimum that we can do to get this thing ensure that we can play hockey on that. Because we can, we've talked, you know, just if I can, I'll go into some of the options that we've talked about, but for example, is putting in horizontal geothermal loops underneath that building and getting that frost out. If that's the reason it's moving, that should solve it. We have our sand floor, we're good for as long as that building stands. If it's not the reason, we're going to lose the ice. No engineer is going to tell us the reason why that floor is moving until we have a geotechnical analysis or we rip it up and see what's under there. Because the reality is, if we say, hey, let's all get together and try to build a new arena, that's like five plus years out, right? So we need something in the meantime. I, I think some of the key decisions that were made, again, this is, stop me if I'm going too no, far. No, okay. But uh, was that the decision was that we were not going to pass a resolution that would kill the junior team. We were not going to do nothing. They weren't going to let the rig fail and just say we've done nothing. Mm -hmm. And we did explore new, and we had no partners at the time, which is a major decision. We had no fundraising at the time, and it all contributed to the decision of not building new. Okay, thank you. Did you have something? Yeah, I just want a very wolf. I live in I live at the ranch, so that's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> But I just want to shed some light on the user groups. Like, I mean, you know, what he said is totally incorrect. Like, that, that rink is used from at time 7 to midnight, you know, right through. So, you know, there's uh, right now Dallas has that school program going, which starts at 8.30, and then there's mom and tots, there's noon hour hockey, there's our practice, and there's can skate, uh, minor hockey, rec league. You know, so there's a lot of people using that facility. And, you know, what originally was said. So it's just, uh, I mean, it's not just the Stampeders we're worried about, it's the community. And, you know, this community is so strong and, you know, to say, you know, we have two local kids playing pro hockey, you know, one in the Western League and, and how many kids in college, you know, that just come out of this 5,000 people community, it's just be ashamed to have that big shut down, you know, or not take the proper steps. And I just think that, you know, for this group here, like, Nobody knows what's going on. I think that's the biggest problem. And, you know, we, these guys talk about their knowledge and what they have to offer. And, I, mean, I mean, I've been in a, a rink all my life, so I mean, I've been involved in building rinks. I've been involved with uh, uh, planning a rink that didn't get built, you know, renovations. Uh, one of our current players, uh, his dad was involved in renovating the uh, uh, rink in Vernon, so he sent me all that info. And then how small the world is, and I, all of a sudden I, get, I got info from the Roslyn Rink, uh, Squamish Rink, uh, North Bay Rink, um, you know, financial impact that the town, like when the tournaments come here, I mean, you know, if a team has 15 kids, there's probably at least two for that kid, whether it's two parents or a sister, and how much, uh, you know, money that's bringing to the, the community with hotels, restaurants, you know, they're buying steaks at the sports shop, whatever it may be. Like, like there's a that's all gone if there's no rink. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a ton account. of impact, you know. And I just wanted to make sure that we everybody understands all that. Okay. You know, and then you know, let's yeah, like I've never seen a community so strong with helping when when it's needed. And I just think if we had a community put something together, there are nice stamp leaders could help, you know, fundraise. And I'm sure the minor hockey would figure skating would. You know, the schools, I don't know how much they can get involved, but I mean, they use three, four hours a day right now coming to skate during school time. So, you know, I just think we're here to help. Like, let's, let's figure it out. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and I don't think anybody up here thinks that we don't need a rank. So uh, I never heard that one time from any member of council that's here. Uh, I'll just repeat again what I said earlier, and that is that this, uh, this uh, process that we're going through tonight is just to start the process as far as bowling goes. It does not guarantee that we are doing a retrofit. Council will look at the tender documents, hear from the community as this time moves forward, and uh, uh, if at that time when we read the documents and they, it's going to be too much or they hear differently and we need to take a different turn on this, then Council will make that decision. 
So uh, up to you to uh, speak to your counselors and, uh, and make your uh, everything known. Go ahead. Can I ask a clarification? As a non-town resident, I live just outside the limits. Is that allowed? Typically it's not, but I, I'll let it. Okay. 223 3rd Avenue Northwest, technically Swan River, but in the RM. Um, Still the RM. <laughs> so uh, clar clarification just on what you said with the borrowing bylaw. This starts the process, that's what you're looking to do. Um, but what happens if the decision is made to not proceed with the retrofit? Do you have to start that process over again to increase that limit? Possibly, yes. We can't change once this if this passes or approved by the municipal board, and it ends up going and, and passes by a third reading because there's three readings that it has to have. And if by any chance, uh, if it's more, uh, then we cannot proceed with this uh, bylaw. So there's a lot of things that have to come into play to make this work. And you know, tonight is considered first reading. Yes, it would. And it has to pass three readings before being. So first out. reading a lot makes it it goes to the municipal board which would have to approve it. So that and if they don't approve it, then we start all over with what the borrowing process is. I think you should advise them about objecting. What's that? The borrowing bylaw the process. Uh, objections go. Uh, yeah, the the public is uh, allowed to object to any any borrowing bylaw we have. Uh, we have to record all the objections tonight and give that to the municipal board. The municipal board will put out an ad here and they decide whether a hearing is, is, is going to be had or not. You can also object to the municipal board directly. Uh, and that, that's it. If there's, I believe if it's three quarters of the voting public uh, do object, the boring bylaw is finished. Uh, I think 25 objections to the municipal board uh, triggers a public hearing, municipal board hearing. I, I'm gonna have to check that number. But who was next? Oh, okay, uh, you're up the front. Tom Warden, 349 Ninth Avenue South. Um, I just want to clarify. Maybe this was, uh, maybe Derek, you made this point before, but I just want to make sure I'm clear in my mind. If you borrow to the extent that you're planning to here, does that pretty much put the Town of Swan River at the ceiling as far as your borrowing capacity? No, if we have the capacity of approximately 16 million and we're at 8.9, okay. we'd be at around that 12, so we'd have four left. But we do have, you know, as, as uh, Mr. Gray spoke to, we have mandatory projects that are coming down the line and they are expensive. So it's the that's the that's the discussion that has been had this entire time. We Council is very aware of the financial position of the town, and they realize the need and the want of the ratepayers of this project, and it's contentious. Yeah. Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Bergen, also an RM resident, but I'm going to flex my journalistic interest here. Um, if I understand correctly from a conversation I had with the Director of Recreation uh, recently, the, this borrowing process is, is, is happening in kind of an unorthodox uh, order, right? Because usually you would have your, your tenders in first and then go forward with your, your borrowing bylaw a little bit? Not necessarily, but you would probably like to have that. But uh, there's a lot of times municipalities will pass borrowing uh, prior to tendering an RFPs. Yeah, actually the other way. We would have our borrowing in place prior to the tender. Okay. Anything further? No. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Timelines. I recently hired someone to do a geotech report, and my goodness, it took quite a while. So if the ice goes out, we get this geotech report done, and my goodness, the, won't the ice have to go in in a few months if something's here? What's your timelines on this renovation project? The, the start of the project it will be technically the day the ice goes out, but we're, we're thinking the start of May, and uh, we are aiming for a end of November completion. Go ahead. Me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess, I mean, I understand that this is a hearing concerning the money, and, and, um, but a lot of, and why I haven't spoken 
about um, you know impact to stampeders and why we chose to send a letter to you guys instead. Um, but I guess a lot of people are probably speaking on the project because they're not. A, this has been our first opportunity um, in this kind of setting to do so. So after, even if your borrowing goes through, will there be another opportunity for the public to weigh in on the decision? I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. And that's why a lot. I think a lot of us are. Just, yeah. Stepping outside of what this hearing is intended to. We we, we will want to do that. Yeah. Yes. And like and, and further to that, like when it, if it goes to a second and third reading, that's at open meetings, and you can register to be a delegation at any of those meetings to speak. So, but. Anything further? When do you expect to make your decision? We have to wait for the gender documents, which we won't hear back. I think about maybe a week and a half to two weeks. About a week and a half. Yeah. So within two weeks? Then? In that timeline, but the thing is we also have to wait for the municipal board as well. And yeah, there's several things that are out of the town's control. Yeah, but like, is it something that would be determined by the end of March? I can't say that because we're speaking on uh, the municipal board and we don't know how quickly they'll move on this. Yeah, like I'm just wondering like... It may, it, it may it, not. It, 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 like, it, be quite honest with you, it may a, not. If there isn't a solid decision by the end of March, really, how can you proceed? You can't. You can't. There, there's no drop dead date where it says, so if we don't get this approved by this and this date, we're going to have to hold off a year. Yeah, that, there, exactly. there definitely is. Yes. That's the whole reason why we're doing this first, potentially this first reason to get that clock started with the missile board, because that can be anywhere from two weeks to four months when it goes down their queue. And if we don't have that approval, we can't do second or third. So they, that's a factor that's totally out of our control that may just destroy this entire anticipated construction period this summer and force it down the road. In addition to the approval of the ACSC grant. Yeah, there's a lot of what ifs. What ifs, which realistically it's hard to see it happen. Is there anything further? I just was wondering if the if the if the borrowing does go through everything like the numbers all come through the funding all comes through. Um, is it, are you going like is the plan to still go ahead with it if say there is objection to maybe not spending doing all of the renovations that you want to do like maybe just just fixing the ice and not doing the extras or is it if you get the if all the funding and the borrowing goes through it's it's that, it's that'll be solely up to council, and uh, if the council decides that they want to vote that uh, down and, and, and not approve it, then it won't proceed. If they want to uh, change it to uh, a different scope, if we're talking about ice surface only, that's the decision of council. I can't speak for that right now, and I don't think anybody here will speak on it right now. But uh, that, when that time comes, uh, everybody will have a chance to uh, voice their opinion on what that might look like, but right now we can't say. Who is next? Go ahead. I, I think this was maybe asked a, a little bit earlier by one of the speakers, and, and um, I know a lot of us in the community have been talking, especially those of us with some construction experience, have been having discussions about what are the options and recognizing that I think the worst case scenario that could happen, and we've heard it, is that our existing floor fix is fine for the end of this season and we start up the plant next season and we get to oh my goodness the end of November and it fails. That kills minor hockey for the year, it kills our junior team for the year and uh, then we're left scrambling, right? Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. And I think the suggestion that was maybe brought up earlier and I just want to ask the question if it's being seriously explored is could there be discussions with the Iron Minotonis Bozeman about the Minotonis Arena to do any necessary upgrades or retrofitting, or at least get some costing on it as to what it would take to make that either A, the backup facility, or, or B, the temporary facility that could be used for one, two, even three, or four, or five seasons to house the team, to house minor hockey, to do what needs to be done so that a valley-wide facility could be planned, fundraised for, considered. Because I think the cost of doing something like that, just from, again, 20 years in the industry, would be significantly less than this type of repair and a lot less risky. Uh, 
you know, we, we can't speak for Minnetoma's Bozeman Council and, and what they uh, feel. We, we can present a lot of options to them if, if it came down to that, but we can't speak for them as far as what they want to do to their facilities and, and, uh, and upkeep. We can bring those forward, and I think that maybe uh, in some previous meetings we have brought it up, uh, but it's, it's, you, you bring up some very good points, but we can't speak on, on behalf of them. And I, I, I don't expect you to speak on behalf of them. I think more of what I was maybe heading to is some proactive, proactive discussion between this council and that council, and even having maybe a willingness to say, hey, we would be willing to put some dollar values towards portion or even all of this, knowing that it would be cheaper for the town to put, say, a million dollars towards renovation on that to buy five years to be able to plan something that actually suits the needs of the valley. Okay, so I've got a few hands up, so I'm going to go with Mr. Poole and Councillor Boychuk, Councillor White, then back to Maggie. We have, we have contacted, like with the, the Swan Valley Stampeders, the, the possibility of going to Minnetonis and the... <coughs> I don't have anything written on here, so I can't be quoted, but what we've been told is is uh, for a practice facility, that's what we'd be shooting for. We would still have to put money into it. The town has discussed the idea, it hasn't been decided or anything, but have discussed with the board in Minnetonas to, to have our employees work there and, and assist them. And, and we have brought nothing to this council in terms of how much that would cost or what that would look like because the, the games were apparently a no from the NHL or MJHL, but it possibly could be used as a practice facility. And what we hear from that board is it could not start in September. They would have to start in November, leaving the Stampeders without a practice facility, which cannot happen. Councilor Boychuk. Yeah, that's what I was just wanting um, a CEO pool to speak to was that those things have been looked into as far as like the change rooms don't meet their standards we have we looked into bringing in atco trailers to do that like we've thrown everything at it to try and make that work in the interim and unfortunately nothing we seem to dance around made them want to accept that the other question i have just to be clear on too so this is a resolution for borrowing the 7.5 for the arena whether Pardon? 2.7. Oh, sorry, 2.7, yeah. Yes, yeah, for the arena. But it's not saying that it's 100% for a retro or to a new build. Like, if, for instance, our... It's for a retro. It's for a retro. It is for the retro, <coughs> it's not, it's not well, open. Yeah, okay. Uh, Council White. Uh, Chris, Mr. Stanley, I guess, a, what did you mean by an upgrade to the Minnetonis Arena? Because I believe... <coughs> repeat what the uh, council just said. We're not to believe the ice is too small because I got a little grumpy over that. I said, why can't we just go out there? But I guess the, the hockey gods say, no, you can't play out there. Ice is too small. This is not right. And I think it's cheaper. So we played hockey. That would be just a wonderful place. It's warm. I, I think that, and again, I'm going to be careful to say it's for sure because there's a lot of things floating around out there about all this and we need to go to the source to find out. But what I have heard is that the change rooms are side by side, which is an issue. That's easily corrected with a small dollar renovation. Uh, the plant may be undersized. I'm not sure what, what that would take to be able to get the plant up and running earlier, but I think there's possibly for this season contingencies the team could consider, um, although not ideal ones, uh, there might be options. But those are the things that I'm aware of that, that I've been hearing that are, are problematic that could be corrected with, again, you know, three quarters of a million to a million dollar renovation would do a lot of work to that facility and buy everybody in this valley a lot of time. Thank you. Go ahead. I spoke to somebody on the arena board for Menatonis, and he said um, he he doesn't know or, or didn't mention the part about the ice surface not being big enough. But he did say they would be prepared to. Of course, they need change rooms, they need uh, improvements. But he did not slam the door shut on that idea, and I I'm hearing a little bit from some council members that, oh, that we've dealt with that. And it's, I think that needs to be opened up and a serious discussion made. And maybe you can't have home games here. I don't know. I know nothing about how this hockey is run, but maybe you can have a practice rink in Minnetonis and, and your other games be elsewhere. I don't know. But I think we need to get creative with how we can get by this kind of like a bottleneck 
and that gives you time to maybe put up a new rink or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Tipping Mayor Morial. Um, yeah, sorry I didn't get your name in the back of the room there, but uh, when you had mentioned that, like a system failure, um, from what I understand, like it's highly likely we'll have a, a system failure. The, the issue is the shifting of the ice, like the concrete surface that's um, creating an ice issue, like with the cracking. So, like, the system is functioning as it's designed to cool and all that stuff, but from what I'm understanding, it, now that we have some insulation there and now the, potentially it's the ice or the frost that's in the ground that's now hopefully yeah. receding, that's potentially causing the ice shifting. So the system is working as intended, but one of the drawbacks is now that we got movement underneath that's creating the bonding of the ice surface to the sand or whatever, where you could have the shrinkage um, with that and that's creating those cracks that are uh, exposing potential liability issues for injury and all that stuff so but uh, that that that's the main concern uh, can we not manage manage those cracks carefully the bias time i'm not an ice expert so uh, well nobody knows nobody knows if, the, if the, the what you guys have laid down in the last five years another mm -hmm. year six right. months nobody really knows yeah. but so like i know that the, the the crews at the arena are managing the crack right now but if it's all of a sudden during a game or yeah. um like as example says in the middle of the second period all of a sudden there's a pop and someone has to come out and say this is done then it, it's a an immediate red light, so maybe director. Uh, director of recreation. Yeah, we are doing what we can to mitigate the crack. Where we have a little auger, I guess, chisel made that we chisel out the crack periodically and flush it back in. Uh, we're just trying to manage it that way, but we are keeping an eye on it and doing it what we can. We're not you know, just throwing up our hands or anything. We're trying the best we can to uh, to mitigate that. And we got the the all professional John Rooks there overseeing it. So. We got that expertise in the building as well, um, so yeah, we're doing all we can on our end. And then the temperature, the temperature um, point is valid as well. We're trying to keep it, you know, as warm as possible with the fluctuating temperatures, just to make sure that the shrinkage isn't an issue. Um, but other than that, we're just we're keeping an eye on it. What's the biggest size of crack you guys had to deal with this far, like width? Uh, they're asking how big of a crack. Uh, the width. The, like the current crack goes from the north end to the south end. Uh, what's that? The width, yeah. The yeah, width. The, the width of the crack right now, the total crack, yeah, is about an inch and a quarter. Um, it hasn't opened yet, which is really good. We're just trying to shave out the, the brittle ice in there and fill it with, with slushed ice um, as, as best we can. So we shave it wider than the crack is and we try to fill it in again. Okay, any further discussion or questions on the uh, on the bylaw itself? Last one. Okay. If you spend seven to ten million dollars on this arena and it's fifty-five years, approximately fifty-five years old now, how many more years do you predict to get out of it? Do they give us a number on that? Uh yeah, they're they're estimating approximately fifteen. Fifteen. Oh my goodness. Fifteen That's a lot of money. Fifteen to twenty. But. There's many sheds in the rural areas that were constructed similar, but um, because of their age and snow, they collapsed. So that's always a concern of mine, especially spending that money. Okay. So we've all taken your notes or your uh, points, uh, you know, uh, down, and council will uh, consider all that. I'm sure of it. A lot of information. I think that we've covered it off pretty much uh, this evening. And I do uh, thank you all for coming out and uh, voicing your concerns. Um, but I think that we can proceed with the rest of the evening um, since we've pretty much heard all the, everything and, and we've kind of circled around a couple times. So again, I, I do thank you all for coming out this evening. And on behalf of council, I do thank you. So with that, I am going to close the public hearing. So uh, uh, resolve that the public hearing for local improvement plan 1, 2023 at 8.59 p.m. Moved by Councillor Bobbitt, seconded by 
Thank you, Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. The hearing is now closed. 3.3, resolved that bylaw 1, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the Swan River Centennial Arena retrofit as a local improvement be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Morio and then Councillor Bobbick. Um, yeah, so as everybody knows and as Council knows, there's a lot of moving parts to this project. Um, just by if this resolution does pass tonight, um, it by in no means indicates um, from myself uh, that this project will be green lighted by myself or uh, what other options there's a lot of other options that's out there that's being currently worked on that may change the whole scope of the practice or take it into a whole new direction um, but uh, as was mentioned during the public hearing uh, the big unknown with the time frame with the municipal board is the reason why we need to get the first reading passed to send it to them because their time frame is 100% out of our control um, and then the construction season for, for this is rapidly approaching so um, we have to get at least some portion of it started uh, but um, the brakes can definitely be uh, put on or redirected at any point so Thank you. Okay, Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, just to echo uh, Deputy Mayor Morio there, at, at any one time, this borrowing bylaw doesn't mean this is going to go ahead. This is a total decision that will come up and probably be the biggest thing will be when those tenders come in. And at, at any one time, it doesn't have to be a roof, it doesn't have to be the walls, the floor is the most important part. Maybe that's something Council will look at. And if that's 90% of the price of the thing, maybe that's something we have to look at again. But without proceeding with this, and something happens to that rate right now and we don't have borrowing bylaw, everything will shut down again. So I think council's moving forward with in mind to keep this rink open at this time at what cost it may be. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Okay, I'll ask the oh, go ahead, Council Moore. Um, um. Edward. I will be abstaining, so at what point do I? You don't have to say anything if you're abstaining. But when do I speak to the reason for my abstaining? When I call the order, the question. Okay. Okay. So all in favor? Okay. Abstention? I have the same questions and concerns as most of our audience has shared. I do support having an arena, but I don't feel the right research and effort has been put into it to make sure that this is the best way to go about it. Since I have come to the table, we have not, to my knowledge, actively engaged our municipal neighbors to see where they might feel as to whether coming on board for this project or as I have the same question about is there a retro or a renovation we can do to Minnetonas that will buy us time to get the right new build done in the community. We don't have those answers. So a lot of the questions the audience made are the same questions and concerns I have. So I don't feel I have enough information to make an informed decision. Okay, that's good. So the, the resolution has been passed. So with that, result the special meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.03 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. All in favor, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I will say if anybody is interested in uh, getting